or semi-simple Kessenberg varieties and uh, unisimilar LLT polynomials. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much for the introduction. I'm sorry I couldn't attend the uh, conference, but anyway, it's my great pleasure to give a talk. So this is the title of my talk, and this is joint work with Takashi Sato. So here is an overview of my talk. The function h is uh, is a is a bracket, but here bracket n is a set of integers from one to n. The function h is the bracket n from bracket n to itself. It's called a Hessenbach function. If it is uh, weakly increasing, and uh, hj is always bigger than j for any j. So this is very simple function. And uh, to Hessenberg function, there are two objects uh, associated. So one is a geometric arm that is a regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety. This is a algebra variety, a projective algebra variety. And uh, the other one is uh, graded chromatic symmetry function. And this is a combinatorial one. And the remarkable thing is that uh, if you consider the cohomology of uh, regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety, it becomes an SN module. And this SN module is essentially same as the graded chromatic symmetry function. This I will explain what this is, I mean, in detail later. And in this talk, I will report that a similar story holds. So here, uh, y of h, this is a twin of uh, x of h introduced by Eisenberg and Victor. And this is y of h is just not, not a variety, just a smooth manifold. And uh, this is a geometric column. And the other combinatorial, the other is a combinatorial LLT polynomial. Uh, this is called, uh, sorry, uh, it is called unicellular LLT polynomial. So Y of H and LLT H of Q, those are associated to H, Hessenberg function. And it turns out, if you consider the cohomology of Y of H, it becomes again SN module. And this SN module is essentially same as uh, LLT, unicellular LLT polynomial. So that's I, what I want to explain in this talk. Okay. <clears throat> so first, regular semi-simple Hessenberg varieties and chromatic symmetry functions. Uh, Hessenberg function, as I said, it is a function from the bracket N to itself and it is weakly increasing, and hj is bigger than or equal to j for any j. And we often express h as a vector, h1, h2, da, 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 hn, by listing values of h. And it is convenient to visualize h by shading ij boxes with uh, i less than or equal to hj. So here's the example. So, this is H is three, three, four, five, five. Namely, H1 is three, H2 is three, H3 is four, and so on. Okay. <clears throat> and then what we do is uh, we shade, the, we look at the first column and we shade three boxes from the top because H1 is three. And then look at the second column and we shade three boxes from uh, from the top to uh, three boxes from the top because H2 is three. Since H3 is four, four we shade four boxes from the top on the third column and so on. Okay. But uh, we, assu we are assuming that Hj is bigger than or equal to J. So essential part in this shaded boxes, essential part is just below the diagonal one. So these uh, uh, five shaded boxes are essential part, okay? <clears throat> and uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the Hessenberg function, the set of Hessenberg functions, 
and did pass it. Why? <laughs> so if you are given a Hessenbach function, uh, take a, start with this uh, left upper corner and go down, look at the boundary of the shaded boxes, go down and go right, down, right, down, and to the end here. We arrive at this point. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so this is a lattice path from this point to this point, the shortest lattice path. And uh, <clears throat> this lattice path is below the diagonal. That such a path is called Dick path. So giving a Hessenberg function is the same as giving Dick path. So the number of Hessenberg functions on bracket n is nth Catalan number, is the number of Dick passes. This is well known uh, number. So there are many Hessenberg functions. Okay. And now I explain the regular semi-simple Hessenbach variety. <clears throat> so I take uh, n times n diagonal matrix, matrix with distinct uh, diagonal entries. So you can take uh, uh, n times n matrix with uh, distinct eigenvalues. You can take that. But for simplicity, I take uh, a diagonal one. Then the regular semi-simple Hessenbach varieties is defined as follows. It is a set of uh, flags satisfying this condition, okay? So S is a matrix, n times n matrix. So we think of S, S as a, a linear map from Cn to itself. So Vj, is a subspace of Cn, so that S of Vj is a linear subspace of Cn. So we require that this is this sits in uh, V of Hj. For instance, when n uh, H is n n n, so Vn is uh, entire Cn, so that this condition is always satisfied. So, so X. Uh, H, when H is N and N, X is, is nothing but the uh, entire flag manifold. But if H becomes smaller, then this condition becomes strict, then the H of uh, X of H becomes smaller. And here is the property of X of H. So X of H is a smooth, projective variety. And the diffeomorphism type is independent of the choice of S. So uh, we are interested in the cohomology of X of H, so we don't care about uh, S. The variety structure may depend on, I don't know, but the diffeomorphism type is independent of the choice of S. And odd degree cohomology is vanishing and the dimension of XH is the sum of HJ minus J uh, over uh, from J is equal to M. And this number, this number is nothing but the number of essential uh, shaded boxes. Uh, here, let's go back. Yeah, so this is a number of these shaded boxes. So it is easy to count the dimension and also, uh, XH is invariant under the T action on the flag manifold. So here, uh, this T action is from, from left, from left on this flag manifold. I used, uh, I wrote uh, this left T action in red to distinguish this right T action, distinguish from the right T action. Then the fixed point set is uh, consists of a permutation flag. So in other words, it is a, a wild group. Then the GKM theory, uh, using GKM theory, 
uh, we can define the SN action on the, this cohomology. So this cohomology becomes the SN module. So indeed, what we do is, uh, uh, since OD cohomology is vanishing, so restriction map to the fixed point set in the equivalent cohomology is injected. And the fixed point set, as I said, it's isolated point, SN. So this is a tensor product of cohomology of SN and cohomology of BT. And since SN is an isolated point, you can think of this tensor product is a map from SN to the cohomology of BT. And here, SN, SN uh, acts on SN itself, and uh, the cohomology of BT, this is a polynomial ring in N variables, and we consider the SN action on this polynomial by uh, permuting uh, generators. Then we define the uh, action on this map, a space of maps from SN to cohomology as a function space. Then it turns out uh, equivalent, equivalent cohomology of XH is invariant under the SN action. So equivalent cohomology becomes SN module. And this action, SN action, descends to the ordinary cohomology. Okay, this is how SN acts on the cohomology. So this was defined by Timotsko. Okay. Sometimes this called the Timotsko's dot action. Now here's the example. As I said, when H is N and N, X of H is just the entire uh, flag manifold, and the SN action on the cohomology is trivial. And when H is two, three, three, so then XH is uh, CP2 uh, and blow up at three fixed points. And here, N is three. So S3 uh, permute these uh, CP2 bar. So the second cohomology uh, as S3 module become this one. So bold one is trivial one dimensional module, SN module, S3 module. And uh, so in means induced representation. And degree zero, degree four, this, this is just trivial uh, SN module, F3 module in this case. And when H is two, three, da, 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 N, N, XH is, is actually parameter header variety. And the parameter header variety is a toric variety associated to the parameter hedron. So it has a natural SN action. Space has natural SN action. Then the, the cohomology has induced SN action. This becomes the SN module. And this was studied in 1990s by the Procheji, Stanley, Stanbridge, Dolgachev, and Lutz. And so this is well studied. But for other H, uh, uh, there are some uh, works, but not fully uh, fully understood. And here is a conjecture, which is equivalent to Stanley Stanley conjecture in graph theory. So the conjecture said that the cohomology of X of H as SN module, so you can always uh, express this uh, linear combination of this induced uh, SN module. Here, lambda is a partition of N. So S lambda is a young subgroup. And C lambda is an uh, integer in general, but the conjecture said that this C lambda is non-negative. Okay. Now, so I explained, I explained the X regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety that the geometrical part. Now, uh, combinatorial part associated to H. So, to H, we can associate the graph, which is called indifference graph. <clears throat> so this is, uh, the definition is quite simple. So G sub H is a graph, uh, the vertices is just a set of integers from one to N. 
and age is IJ, where IJ satisfies this condition. And pictorially, uh, when uh, when H is uh, they say three, three, four, five, five, so this condition is nothing but we are looking at the, these uh, essential shaded shaded boxes. So whenever you have a shaded box, you have H. So for instance, uh, here this is a two one box. So uh, we have H between one and two. And this is three one box. So we have edge between one and three and so on. And when H is uh, two, three, da, 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 N, the GH, a graph is just a path graph and the regular sim simple Hessenberg variety is permittahedral. Now when H is N and N, the graph is a complete graph. So, Regular same simple Hessenberg varieties, in some sense, in between the parameter hetero variety and the complete uh, flag uh, manifold or flag variety. <clears throat> now, so we can associate uh, symmetry function to the graph. Uh, the kappa is a function from the vertices, the set of vertices of GH, that is a, nothing but a set of integer from one to N, the kappa is a map from bracket N to the positive integers. And this map is called coloring, and this map is called proper. If uh, kappa I is uh, different from kappa J, whenever IJ is H. And here, here is an example. So kappa, uh, it's, uh, we, this kappa two seven, as we assign the uh, positive integer this way. And uh, one, two is the age. So we have a different numbers. One, three is also age. We have different numbers. But uh, here, two at the four is not the age. So we can have the same uh, integer, uh, positive integer. Okay, so uh, to kappa, we uh, assign a monomial this way. Here, just, uh, so since we have one, two, uh, we have x2, we have one, three, we have x3, and one, five, x5, five. we have two, seven, so x7 squared. Okay, <clears throat> and also we consider the ascending, the number of ascent. So this is the definition of ascent. So in this uh, example, ascent is uh, H12, because number two, seven is just increasing. The one, three is also ascent, and but two, three is not ascent. Three, four is ascent. The four, five is not ascent. So there are three ascent. Okay, now a chromatic symmetry function so you consider all proper coloring on the graph and uh, take monomial and uh, consider that this uh, ascent and take sum. And this is a polynomial in Q with symmetry functions in X1, X2 as coefficient. So this is not, uh, uh, it's not obvious. But but it is proved by shadation works. Stanley, uh, Stanley didn't consider grading, but shadation works, they introduce a grading. Okay. Now, here's the relation between the, uh, I will extend the relation between the regular simple Hessenberg varieties and graded chromatic symmetry function. Capital lambda is a ring of all symmetry functions in variables x1, x2. We, we have infinitely many variables. And E sub k is case elementary symmetry functions. We take all multiplicity free monomials of degree k 
and take sum. And H sub K is case complete symmetry function. So we take all uh, degree K monomials and take sum. Then uh, the ring of uh, all symmetry functions is known that uh, it's a polynomial ring in E1, E2, da, da, da. So infinitely many generators. Also, it is polynomial in H1, H2, da, da, da. Infinitely many polynomial uh, generators. And omega is an involution on capital lambda, sending EK to HK. And one more thing is uh, Frobenius character. Uh, Frobenius character is uh, you consider the sum of uh, all uh, uh, sum of representation ring of S n for all n. And uh, so, if you have a uh, uh, this induced representation induced representation, the one is a trivial representation. So Frobenius character send this representation to the H lambda, where H lambda is a product of uh, case uh, complete symmetry functions, where lambda is a partition of n. Okay. Now, so we can state the theorem by uh, proved by Brosnan Chow and gay packet <clears throat> by the Brosnan child, this is two people. But gay packet, this is one person just. <clears throat> and gay packet, he put uh, his proof on archive, but didn't publish. So that's why I didn't put an uh, ear here. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, this is a chromatic, graded chromatic symmetry function. And you take, uh, apply the this involution. So this is the left, side, left hand side. The right hand side, the geometry one, one. So this, as I said, this is the SN module. So you send this SN module by uh, Frobenius character. So this is a symmetry function. And, and they agree. <laughs> so this theorem, uh, this was conjectured by Charation Wax and they proved the uh, Charation Wax conjecture. So I think this is a remarkable result. This is combinatorics. This is a geometric one. And they don't look related, but they are related. Now we can interpret uh, uh, X of regular simplistic per Hessenbach varieties in terms of matrix. So we set H, capital H, is a subspace of uh, uh, n by n matrices. So we require that H J, ij entry is zero for i is bigger than hj. So he, here is an example. So what this condition is nothing but when h is uh, three, three, four, five, five. So this white box is here. This part we require the uh, the entry corresponding to this part be zero. This is a condition. Then X of H can be written as follows. Uh, X of H is GT and satisfying G inverse SG uh, belongs to H. So I will explain why we, you get this condition. So if you take a uh, unitary matrix, let's take this one. Then what do you do is you associate flag uh, to this unitary matrix. What do you do is you take the first column and uh, a vector spanned by first column. And then V2 is a vector space spanned by first and second column and so on. And this is a condition for the Hessenberg variety. Uh, and this condition is not, is nothing but uh, this in, this equality because uh, here the s of v one 
small v1. It's, so we require that S of v capital V1 is contained VH1, but H1 is three. So that S of V1, this says that S of V1 is expressed uh, as a linear combination of V1, V2, V3. That's why here we have, we can have maybe non-zero element here, but this should be zero and so on. And, and this shape is exactly the same as this shape. So this equation, so since uh, this is G, this is also G, oh, sorry. So you take a G inverse, may, uh, take this to the left, then G inverse SG is of this form. This is nothing but this uh, condition. Okay. Now I will expand the twin and the LLT polynomial. Now I, as I explained, x of h can be written as, as this way. And h is a Hessenberg space associated with small h. And the twin is simply defined as follows. So y of h, the, we have the same condition. But so we consider the uh, 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 we take the uh, flag, flag by the uh, left multiplication, uh, so left, left quotient. So this is the definition of a twin. So if you take a quotient of a unitary group right by right T action, so what, we, what you are doing is just you are looking at the uh, flag spanned by uh, column vectors. But the light, if you take the quotient of un by the left t action, so what do you do geometrically? This is uh, uh, you are look, considering a flag by taking uh, taking uh, row vectors. So in other words, <clears throat> so this one. In other words, so z of h is the subspace. Uh, a unitary group defined by this condition. So this is uh, t uh, times t space. So red t acts from left, black t from right. So that x of h is just quotient of z, z of h by the right t action, and y of h is the quotient of z h by the left t action. So when h is n n n, so ZH, ZH is just unitary group, so that X of H is the uh, flag manifold, uh, quotient by T action, right T action, Y of, oh, sorry, y of, y of H is also unit, uh, flag manifold, uh, quotient of UN by the left T action. But they are isomorphic, they are same, diffeomorphic. But, uh, but in general, X and H, and y of h are different. So the taking inverse, so we may define the uh, y of h in this way. So inverse uh, send the left corset, corset to the right corset. So that uh, <clears throat> then the, since we are taking inverse, this condition just uh, becomes this condition. So this is, uh, the staircase uh, uh, in Anton's case, Anton's talk, y of h. So anyway, <laughs> so module structure. Uh, module structure, so as I said, equivalent cohomology sits in here and uh, of x h, and similarly, equivalent cohomology of y of h is sitting here. And uh, <laughs> For xh, so red t, so we consider the uh, cohomology of bt for red t permuting generators. While the uh, black t, we consider trivial one. Then the, this, these two, they become invariant under the SN action. 
Okay. The twin of twin YH resembles XH. Uh, for instance, their cohomology the same as a group. And both become SN module. But they are different in general. The co their cohomology uh, are different as a ring in general. And uh, the SN module never the same. And as I said, X of H is a smooth projective variety, while Y of H is just a smooth manifold. Probably Y of H is, is uh, stably parallelizable, I think. So they are quite similar, but different. <laughs> and the relation between X of H, a cohomology of XH and Y of H, so this is what I explained. Okay. Then the cohomology, ordinary cohomology of X of H, uh, you take uh, equivalent cohomology and quotient by the ideal uh, gen generated by positive degree element of BT. And then you can see this is this is the same as this one because uh, uh, X of H is this form. And Y of H is similar. The, they are almost same, but the only difference is uh, these ideas. And as I said, from this description, you can see they are same as a group, but you can check that they are different as a rings in general. Now, I will explain the unicellular LLT polynomials. So LLT, unicellular LLT polynomials are quite similar to the chromatic symmetric functions, almost the same. <clears throat> so kappa is just a coloring. So we don't require a properness, just all coloring, <laughs> and any, any, any map, any map. Then X kappa is the same as before, and uh, Ascent of kappa is also same as before. So here's the example. Kappa is 27277. So you can, so we have an edge between one to three, but uh, so we can allow the same numbers. Then x kappa is uh, this monomial, and ascent you can check this is two. Then unicellular LL polynomial is just, so you consider all coloring on graph and then take the sum and associate uh, this monomial and Q times uh, ascent, then take the sum. And if you take Q to be one, evaluate uh, at Q equal to one, then, uh, this is just a product of uh, the nth fold product of sum of all variables. So when Q is equal to one, so this is, uh, I mean, LLT polynomial is independent of H. <laughs> the important part is ascent. And so this is a definition, uh, this is, I said this is a definition of unicellular polynomial, but the uh, original definition of unicellular LL polynomial is different from the above. So LLT polynomials were introduced by Lasku, Lekla, uh, Tibon as a QT formation of the product of skew sure functions indexed by a tuple of skew Young diagrams. And LLT polynomials called unicellular if all the skewed young diagrams consist of a single box, that's why uh, unicellular, it's called unicellular. <laughs> okay, now here's our main result. So unicellular error point polynomial is equal to the, uh, essentially equal to the cohomology of Y of H. As I said, this is a SN module, and we send 
this SN module uh, to the uh, symmetry function uh, through Frobenius uh, characteristic, <clears throat> and they are equal. So this is quite similar to the theorem uh, proved by Grossman Chow or Gay Packet. And in fact, so we proved this one uh, using their result. So what we do is uh, uh, we look at this relation on the right-hand side and also the left-hand side. And uh, in some sense, we translate the, the uh, Rosnan Chow or Gay Packet theorem to this form. And I, I, I would say that the Precap Summers, oh, they also noticed this uh, equality. And I will, so our original proof is, as I said, it's just a translation of this fact. But uh, the, we also proved, recently proved another proof. I will explain it later. And they are slightly different. The cohomology of XH, this is just a point duality uh, as S, SN modules. This is also Poincaré duality, but in some sense, twisted Poincaré duality as SN modules. So this uh, blackboard U is one dimensional SN module associated with sign representation. And if we forget the uh, grading, if we forget the grading, this is always uh, uh, as a SN module, this is always regular representation. But X of H, the cohomology of X of H is not, is never regular representation. So also it depends on H, even if we forget the uh, uh, grading. So now uh, I will expand the uh, modular law so modular law is, uh, so you take a, a Hessenbach function, one Hessenbach function, okay? For instance, this one. And then so that's H. And H plus is just you add one box to H. For instance, uh, one box here. Okay, this is H plus. So H minus, it, you delete one box from H on the same column as ab above. If you add one box here, then, then you get H plus, then H minus is you delete this box on the same column. But if you, you cannot add a box here because then you don't get it, then this is not Hessenbach function. But anyway, uh, by adding and a box, one box or deleting one box, you get H plus or H minus. You get a triple H, H plus, H and H minus. Then the function, capital F, is a function from the, the set of Hessenberg function to the polynomial in Q, with uh, symmetry functions as uh, coefficient is said to satisfy the modular law if this equality is satisfied. And this is uh, same as this one. Okay. <clears throat> so you compare the f of h for h and h plus and h minus. And so recently, Abru, Negro, they proved that if the capital F, the function F, satisfies the modular law for what we, I would say, modular triples. So this is not just triple, but satisfying certain conditions. I will not explain. But anyway, this is. Uh, triple satisfying certain condition, then F is uniquely 
determined by initial conditions. Again, okay, if you if F satisfies the modular law for modular triple, and also uh, if you look at the initial condition, so here initial condition means uh, so uh, F. In, so for instance, uh, uh, when H is N and N in that flag case, or so this is in in terms of uh, uh, dick pass N and N is this dick pass. Or, for instance, uh, you go down and go right and uh, to the to the this diagonal and go down and to the to this diagonal and go down. So such a path or Hessenbach function corresponding to such a path is corresponds to the product of smaller flag manifolds. So that's the initial condition. So initial condition means, oh, sorry. Initial condition means, uh, so, so such a path or such a Hessenbach function. So if, uh, so if that's a initial condition satisfied, uh, uh, or if you know the initial, con uh, if you know the value of F for such uh, Hessenbach function, then F is uniquely determined. And you can check that. So this is a function that's capital F function from Hessenbach function, the so symmetric polynomial, uh, sorry, uh, polynomial ring uh, in Q with symmetry functions as coefficient. This is a capital F. This is another capital F. And you can check that uh, they both uh, satisfies modular law for modular triples. And you can also check that uh, their initial conditions are same. And also in this case, both, uh, both satisfy modular law and uh, their initial conditions are same. You can check that. So original proof of Brosnan and Chow, they use a very deep algebra geometry and gay pocket. He uses uh, hop algebra on deep passes. So, uh, so their proof are very difficult to understand <laughs> for me. And Precap pre Summers, they also prove the modular law, but they use intersection cohomology, and their co proof is also not easy to understand. But recently proved that uh, our proof is uh, we use the GKM theory, and our proof is quite elementary. I mean, to prove the modular law, quite elementary. So anyway, uh, by showing that they, so those uh, terms satisfy modular law, we can prove the equality. Thank you for your attention. Happy birthday, Victor. <clears throat> I stop here. Any questions to the speaker? Okay, yes. Ah, follow me here again, that's Taras. Uh, but about this uh, twins, and do you have uh, the description of the cohomology ring for this y of h is it kind of a uh, quadratoric manifold or something like that when you say that the cohomology rings are not isomorphic uh, do you have actually uh, a description yeah. for both I, I think you have for the hessenberg variety but what about the second one no no, no. uh even the for hessenberg varieties uh, we, we can we have a gcam description mm -hmm. but uh we know the GKM description, but uh, it is not easy to describe the cohomology ring in general, like a polynomial ring modeled by, I mean, generated, I mean, ideas. I that? remember uh, over rationals, at least, I think you, you have a kind of presentation or it. it... Uh, in some case, in some case. In some not, case. Not, uh, yeah, not, not for all. My, so that's a, 
that's very difficult to describe the uh, uh, cohomology ring structure. It's find the presentation of the cohomology ring. It's very difficult. Even if you know the GKM description. When you say that cohomology rings are not isomorphic, you just check some particular products of some particular elements of how, how you show that they are not isomorphic. I, isomorphic in general, not all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. So yeah, we know uh, we, have, we look at the particular examples. Right. Ah. Okay. So that for both for both examples, it's not it's not quite well known. It's not quite understandable. Yeah, how how that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not not. Right. Quite. You only have the GKM description, but not yeah. a presentation with with generators yeah. in relation. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, other questions? Miki, it is Victor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for the very nice talk. I was I was happy to see you and uh, obtain the new new results. Unfortunately, we can't join and discuss together, but I yeah. remember certainly our meeting in different place. Thanks for this fantastic photo. I can see so many of my colleagues. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> only 15, yeah, 15 years you? ago. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should like mention only with such comments. Uh, when we uh, what with you, with uh, Taras, with Collier, Javier Zinpak, obtain the result about the rigidity. Yeah, I yeah. Remember. yeah, I, yeah I remember. Sure. Uh, the, I discussed this question with uh, Sergei Novikov. Yes, sir. And you know, in the 60s, they obtained so many deep results for the theory of manifolds in Russian, uh -huh. Novikov, people, Milner. Yeah, yeah. Novikov mentioned it in the time when they. I'm sorry, I cannot hear. Huh? They cannot find a good examples of manifolds. What? I'm, you saying, see? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear that because sorry. it's a microphone the problem. You understood? Sergei mentioned it, that in yes. the time when they yes. obtain deep fundamental result about yes, many faults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have not good examples of many faults where uh -huh. they can demonstrate this result. But now, uh -huh. now, uh, yeah, yeah. we obtain so many very yeah, nice many faults, important yeah. Important, classes yes. of many folks which yeah, yeah. give to us the possibility to obtain not only a new result but mm -hmm. very deep interrelation between mm -hmm. theory of many folks and uh dynamical system and so so exactly uh, what your talk demonstrate other interrelation mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. very nice class of many folks as Hasenberg. Yeah. Manifolds. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. such interesting combinatorial result. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for the comment. Okay, any other questions? If there are no questions, uh, let's thank the, the speaker. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the, no the next talk will be in 10 minutes, so we have 10 minutes rest. <laughs>